Hello and welcome back to Goblin Gaming. I'm Xanthus and we're back in Soulstone Survivors. It's gotten some pretty major updates since the last time we played it. Unfortunately, those updates did drop the same week as Diablo 4 released, so haven't really had much a chance to play this game since then, but there's been a major overhaul to the game. The runes have massively changed. There are now skill trees for about half the classes in the game, which is pretty cool. You don't really have to make any meaningful choices. If you've played enough of the game, you can just pretty much get everything. And that's fine. That's no big deal. But it does add a lot of depth and identity to each character. So it is kind of a unique thing. Pretty cool. Today, we're going to be looking at playing the Paladin. And his unique mechanic is the Divine Inspiration mechanic. Basically, what's going to happen is on the battlefield every so often, you get these yellow circular uh, beams that slowly close in, similar to like the healing spell. And if you stand in it, you accumulate this divine inspiration resource. Once you max it out, you get a bunch of different buffs. We've just taken everything. The other stuff on the skill tree is a lot of things increase disoriented and dazed damage. A lot of things increase crit damage and crit chance. A few things increase toughness and pushback resistance and some healing type stuff. So we're going to try and lean into that whole mechanic as much as we can. We are not going to be taking vulnerable exploit uh, because it's contingent upon stacks of dazed and disoriented. And while we will have massive amounts of those at any given time, why not just take something that, you know, is giving us an always benefit like multicast mastery or crit mastery instead. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take reroll mastery as well so that we get lots of rerolls so we can fine tune our build the way we want to. We're going to take a new rune called Adrenaline, which gives you uh, increased cooldown reduction, increased cast frequency, basically, as you lose health. The idea behind this is we're going to give ourselves a big buffer of health, and then as we lose health, we'll cast faster, and as we cast faster, we'll heal back up faster, because we're going to be taking Exorcism for the self-healing. And then we're going to take Skill Mastery Electric, specifically so we can unlock the uh, Swing from Barbarian, called Thundering Slash, which leaves an area of effect on the ground that quickly accumulates dazed or disoriented on the target um oh wait not thundering slash uh no that's not it it's it's electric swing or something like that at least a an aura on the ground that does dazed effects uh it should help scale our damage with our uh secret weapon with our new weapon for our paladin which is going to be the dawnbreaker's mace fisher strike applies dazed the secret weapon basically scales damage based on number of stacks of days. So we're going to go ahead and hop on in. Uh, I'll pause and unpause at meaningful points and just show you little snippets of gameplay. And then we'll show you the build when it's fully online. And then we'll show you some end game stuff. Now we are, of course, playing on max difficulty, max curse. Everything is enabled because, I mean, the game's kind of boring otherwise. That's kind of one of the main points to this game is it adds a lot of fun mechanics to dodge. A lot of bolt heavens don't do that, so it's kind of one of the, the staples of what makes this game unique, along with being able to scale the effects, which we are definitely going to have to scale down. But this is our new ability that we have. It's pretty spiffy looking, if I do say so myself. Hopefully we find the other ability relatively quickly, because we want to be able to utilize that. That's the class mechanic. You can see there, we stood in it, we gained a little bit of the resource. And then this is what the resource does for us. 25% crit damage, 25% crit chance, 500% pushback resistance, 95% damage modifier, 50% armor, 15% cast frequency, 40% movement speed, and 5% area. Once it fills up, it slowly depletes, or quickly depletes. It's pretty good, though, when you get it online. I think the best way to go is to charge up a bunch of it and then have it ready for when the boss spawns and then just activate it once the boss spawns. It's probably the way to go. Anywho, we're going to work on getting some uh, pieces of this build online and we'll see you in a moment. Alrighty, we got the linchpin of the build which is Staggering Blow. This is the secret weapon ability for this new weapon. Thrust your holy shield forward, dealing 775 damage and extra 46 damage per stack of dazed or disoriented on the target, and transform all stacks of dazed into disoriented, which makes each stack of disoriented give 1% crit strike and 1% crit damage. So basically, you lower your overall crit chance by transforming it into disoriented, but you increase your overall damage by stacking more crit damage. So 
It's a, it's a pretty cool ability, actually. So we got that. Uh, we're running Jupiter's Spear at the moment, which is actually a unique uh, Legionnaire-only item, usually. But uh, it happened to drop for us, so we're using it. We're going to probably replace that and Thunderstrike eventually with two of the Barbarian Lightning-based abilities. But for the moment, you got to kind of roll with what you got when you get it, so... It's, uh, it's looking pretty solid so far. We're uh, shredding through stuff pretty nicely. We're getting our area of effect scaled up on our exorcism to provide us with the self-healing that we need. It's very, very important. Anytime you see area of effect for exorcism, you pretty much need to take it until it covers the entire screen, which we're getting pretty close. Because remember, for exorcism to heal, you have to hit at least four targets, which means basically you need to hit the whole screen every time you cast it. There's definitely something to be said for Arcane Power here. However, I really want to take as many ways as possible to stack up Electric Day Stacks. I guess you could argue that having multicast on a lot of different abilities is better than a single ability stacking more of it. Hmm. Yeah, let's go ahead and replace Thunder Strike, even though it's a really good ability. We're going to replace Arcane Power. Thunder Strike with Arcane Power. So we get some multicast going off just to stack up the days quicker. And the other idea behind that, I guess, is that it's going to give us more self healing. So that if we get multicasts of Exorcism, that's going to help heal us back up quicker. So now I don't know if I want to invest into Jupiter Spear because I'm 99% sure we're replacing that. Let's see. Jupiter Spear. Just says in an arc in front of you, four lightning bolts. This says three, but pierces. This is four, but chains. So in reality, this is 12 applications of dazed. And this is 12 applications if it pierces at least four enemies. Hmm. Yeah, I think Fisher Strike is actually better than Jupiter Spear, but I'm not quite sure. It is a lower cooldown as well. The nice thing about Jupiter Spear is it's got arc out in every direction. It's going to automatically hit targets every single time, versus Fisher Strike might not sometimes. So, you know what? Maybe we replace Fisher Strike eventually uh, with the Barbarian specific electric ability. Let's go ahead and invest into Jupiter's Spear, because I think we're going to keep it after thinking it out a little bit. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and build up some more power and we'll cut back at a uh, relevant point, maybe on the last set of bosses for the first stage of Endless, so you can kind of see where we're at. Immediately after I pause the video, I get Thundering Strike, Thundering Slash. Uh, slash is in the direction you're aiming at, causing 140 damage extra, 31 damage per stack of days or disoriented. That's That's what we're looking for. Uh, so let's go ahead and replace Fisher Strike with this. And then, you know, actually, I think we are going to replace Jupiter Spear with the other Barbarian Electric ability that leaves the aura on the ground. But for now, we're going to take Thundering Slash. It's going to be one of our two main damage dealers along with Staggering Blow. And uh, we're going to replace Fisher Strike with it. Let's go ahead and just kill this first set of bosses, see how it goes. And then we'll uh, cut. Uh, Brutal Strikes is always good. Area of Burst, which is our exorcism, is very important. So we're actually going to lock for that. And we're going to take Brutal Strikes to apply bleeds. Because why not? Taking some significant damage there. But good thing is we heal it right back up with our exorcism. We just got to make sure we don't stand in the death from the, from the Reaper dude. Uh, let's go ahead and lock out the multicast for frontal. Grab both that as well as more area of effect on our exorcism, and we are sitting pretty. These bosses really didn't do very much. Uh, we took a lot of damage, but we healed a lot back up, so yeah, I think we're going to be perfectly fine on this build. Alright, we're doing quite well. Have not managed to quite get full up time on the arcane power yet, but we're real, 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 real close to that. Uh, we've also managed to scale up the damage of our two main damage dealing abilities quite significantly. So we're hitting pretty much like a Mack truck at this point. 
have not found the lightning slash that leaves the area of effect on the ground yet. Uh, that's definitely going to be one we're going to want to find eventually in order to get this build fully online. But yeah, I mean, we're doing pretty good. As you can see there, I took 200 damage and instantly healed it all back up more or less. So uh, you can definitely still get one shot if you're not careful. So we want to be building, there it is, overcharge strike. We want to be building uh, HP and block and resilience whenever possible so that we can mitigate one shots. But as long as we can mitigate one shots, we should be able to scale pretty far into the end game here. Now the question is, do I want to replace Chain Lightning or do I want to replace Jupiter Spear? I honestly think Jupiter Spear might be a little bit better than Chain Lightning. Chain Lightning is doing a whole lot more damage though it looks like. Jupiter Spear is probably applying more stacks of Dazed. And that's the main way we're scaling our two damage dealers. It's a little bit of a hard call because I'm not quite sure which one scales the day stacks more because it says four lightning bolts that jump to three additional nearby targets. Now does that mean each bolt jumps three times or altogether it jumps three times? Because the difference between seven and twelve is pretty significant as far as dazed applications goes, right? This one is seven jumping to a nearby target if possible, which brings it up to 14. So strictly speaking, this one should it be better unless it's saying that each lightning bolt jumps three additional times in which case this one would be way better i'm not quite sure we're gonna go and just replace jupiter spear and just pull the trigger on that but now we have the area of effects on the ground stacking up dazed everywhere and we're definitely gonna have to turn down our graphics because holy cow is that gonna get super spammy but that is the end of the first round we did it in seven minutes 52 seconds so Semi-decent time, not amazing, but not bad either. So let's go ahead and just start jumping into Endless Mode and see how it goes. We'll uh, swing back towards the end of Endless Round 1 for you guys. Alrighty, so we're doing pretty good. I accidentally stood in several different Reaper effects and almost killed myself. Took away both of my cheat deaths, so... Did kind of hamper myself there, but I think we're going to be fine. I just ate a bunch of damage as well, walking straight into a fire beam while I'm pausing the recording, but again, this build is super tanky. We should be fine to go into at least endless four or five with it, so as you can see, it's kind of shrekking right now. We'll go ahead and turn on the graphical effects so you can see what's actually going on, but it's it's kind of nutty. Alright, let's see. Uh, let's grab... Ooh, yeah, I like more cooldown reduction for sure, for sure. Yeah, check it out. It's actually crazy, right? Alright, we'll get into the beginning of stage two and listen, show you what it kind of looks like here. But yeah, this build's uh build's turning out nicely. It's uh working pretty well. Stand in the circle and everything just kinda of dies. So yeah. I do have auto-aim on, so it auto-aims at whatever the nearest target is, rather than having to aim it myself with my mouse cursor, I just prefer it like that. I've never really been a big fan of the whole having to aim it thing. Um, I do wish there were a third option where I could hold down the button to manually aim when I want to and keep it auto-aiming the rest of the time. That's something I hope they add, but until then the auto-aim is just fine. Yeah, we're, uh, we're kind of shrekking, so... The next goals of this build are going to be to continue scaling the HP and the armor and more importantly uh, work on scaling cooldown reduction because we want the chain lightnings, exorcisms, thundering slashes and overcharge strikes and staggering blows. Basically this arcane power is already permanent but everything else we want to get down to ideally under half a second cast time for every ability um, which I know is a big ask considering we're not running Scent of Blood or Bloodlust. But that's kind of our goal right now, is just to focus everything we have on cooldown reduction as much as possible. So we're going to continue working towards that, and we will cut back either when I'm about to die or on the next next set of end bosses. Alrighty. Got a bit more HP, a bit more toughness. Got our crit chance up to 170. 
Our uh, multicast is up to 243 on Arcane Power, so we are bopping right along here. We currently have the class mechanic activated for the extra damage and resistances and everything else. So we're going to try to continue re-upping that whenever we can by driving that uh, circle on the ground whenever possible. Not that it's really going to matter because these guys are going to be dead so quickly. It's not going to be funny. It's actually happened before I even finished my sentence. So, all right, there are the four bosses for that round. <laughs> That's kind of, it's kind of nuts. Uh, let's grab more damage on our Thundering Strike. That sounds great. Uh, yeah, presently our Overcharge Strike is actually doing quite a good deal of damage. Uh, same with our Thundering Slash, but the real just mind blower is Staggering Blow. The hits for a whopping 2,500 plus an additional 152 per stack of days are disoriented. I don't know how many stacks we had on those bosses before they died, but I'd imagine at least a couple hundred. So that's, that's a lot of damage. Our exorcism is actually doing decent damage as well as healing us. The heal is the more important part, but that's not bad for damage. And then chain lightning is doing a truck ton too. So yeah, we're uh, we're hitting pretty hard at this point. We're just gonna keep scaling up to the moon. Well, I accidentally stood in another uh, reaper attack, so I guess that's the end of that run. But you can see the build has a lot of potential. Uh, we only went to Endless 3 here, but I am sure I could have went a lot deeper if I wasn't being stupid and not paying attention. As you can see, Thundering Slash actually did a huge amount of damage, more than Staggering Blow. I thought Staggering Blow was going to be the real winner here. But it looks like Thundering Slash just outclasses it, probably because it scales more, more per stack of days, and we're just applying so many stacks of days. We got them around the same time, so... Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, Thundering Slash far and away the winner here. Interesting. In second place is Staggering Blow as expected, but Overcharge Strike coming up very close behind it as well. Jupiter's Spear I think was doing pretty good. I think I should have kept it instead of Chain Lightning, so if I were going to change anything with this build, it would probably be keeping Jupiter's Spear instead of Chain Lightning. The other thing you could do is you could take the Thunder Strike... The area of effect that stuns and hits really hard. That could be really good because it's going to be stunning the whole screen constantly. It won't work on bosses, obviously. But more importantly, it's just going to hit really, really hard. And it's just going to apply the dazed effects to everybody all the time. So that might be another way to go. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This game has seen a lot of big improvements lately. So you should definitely jump back in and check it out if you haven't seen it in a while. And uh, yeah, I'm going to play around with some more stuff. Who knows if I'll make more videos, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure you like, favorite, share, subscribe. Check back for more entertainment from Goblin Gaming. Hopefully some of our other community members will be making some videos pretty soon here. And uh, we're going to get this, this rebrand up and rolling. Thanks, guys, and have a wonderful rest of your day.